Hey everyone, this is Hillary at Totally Bored, and today we're gonna to be talking about our top three favorite party games. All right, so we got a chance to play a lot of different party games throughout the holiday season, and I thought it would be a fun idea to talk about our top three favorite party games. So we're gonna start with our number three, and we'll go around kind of in a little panel, and uh, Dad, if you want to start, you can start with your uh, number three favorite party game. Okay, yeah, it was Secret Hitler. I enjoyed that game. It's similar to Avalon, but to me it's a little more strategic, and it was just fun interacting with everybody that we were playing with, so mm -hmm. I really liked that game. And what do you, can, would you mind describing it a little bit to, to the audience? What do you do in Secret Hitler? Basically, you've got two sides. You've got fascists and you've got liberals, and then you, you have a president and mm -hmm. a chancellor, right? Mm -hmm. yep. And so... Um, you get to you get to play those different parts, and you get certain powers with those different offices, and mm -hmm. it's just um, it goes back and forth, and you have to figure out who's lying and who's telling the truth. But yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. What did you like about it? What was your favorite part? Um, just the fact that we were lying our asses off. No. <laughs> What I liked was the fact that we you you get to um, be deceitful, mm -hmm. um, you get to uh, trick the other sides, and sometimes you're just flat out lying. It's just fun to try to catch mm -hmm. who the people are that are doing that. It's just fun. Yeah, I think you were very good at it. I must have taught you well as a child <laughs> how to lie. Yeah, I like the I like the mm -hmm. you just step into a role, so mm -hmm. you can decide if you. Even if you're a fascist or a liberal, you can decide how you want to play that. So you can mm -hmm. really just get into the um, like the costume, so to speak, of, mm -hmm. of whatever character you are, which is super fun. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Well, I'll go with my number three. I think I'm actually going to go with Wavelength. Sorry, Dad, let me move these around for you. But yeah, this game is a... I don't even know if I would call this a... It's not a deduction game, but you're basically... You have a card that's going to give you a hint. And for example, it could be hot and cold. And you have a, uh, I can actually get it out really quick. This spectrum, uh, which is going to have a random uh, little spectrum on it, I should say. And you're basically trying to get your team to guess correctly uh, on the spectrum. So for example, if the spectrum was right here and uh, the card that I drew was hot and cold, um, whenever I show my teammates, they're not actually going to be, be able to see where the spectrum is at. But I might say something like uh, coffee. So if they if hot is on the left, they would probably try to guess somewhere over here where coffee would be. And then I would reveal it. And if they get it on the spectrum, they get points. And I just thought that was really fun. It's a fun little game trying to get on the same wavelength as the name suggests with your... Uh, that you're the teammates and I just thought it was really fun and yeah I, I loved it I, it's definitely we played it a few times so it's interesting when you're playing with people who you really know versus people you may have just met yeah because when the, there's just it creates such a different kind of dynamic so mm -hmm. if you really know somebody it's, it's a lot, obviously a lot easier to get on the right. same wavelength and you can almost kind of uh, play on like inside jokes or just things that you know about them already. Mm -hmm. So when it's when you're playing with people you don't know as well, it's a little bit, bit harder to kind of gauge where you think they might be, which right. is the fun part of it too because it's challenging in that yeah. way. Yeah, yeah, it's a little nerve wracking because we were playing with you and <laughs> Hillary and Hayden, which are very much into games, mm -hmm. and so that made it a little more uh, challenging playing with people who are used to the game. Yeah. No. I also like one thing I liked about it too is that after your team goes, the other mm -hmm. team has a chance to sort of rebuttal and guess. And 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 how would you say that? Like yeah. So so basically, whenever it's not your team's turn, after the team guesses, you uh, your team you get to guess whether the bullseye, which is the four right here, I'll try to zoom in on that. Uh, you get to guess whether it's on the left or right of the needle. And if your team is correct, you get a point mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's cool just to have that other opportunity. And we I, we played it a couple of times where we went all the way to the end of the the score and then back just because mm -hmm. I feel like it's almost not long enough. Yeah. That's what, which to me is an indicator that it's, it is that fun because right. I wanted to keep going with mm -hmm. it. Yeah. I mean, if you get the bullseye twice, you almost won the game. I think it's the first to 10 points and the bullseye is four. So you can, you right. can finish a game pretty fast, honestly, right. in just a few minutes if you, if you're good enough. 
But but yeah, that's my number three. What about you, Hill? Ugh, this is hard. I think my number three though is gonna be a Love Letter, which is super fun. This down. is Love Letter. Uh, so I'm not much of a game player, so mm-hmm. you might want to explain. <laughs> you can how, try. Do you want me to? to I... I can try. Um, so love letter is your your goal is to get your letter to the princess, and so everybody gets a card, and no mm-hmm. one you don't tell anybody who who you are, right? Mm-hmm. Right. It's like a secret. Right. A secret card. Yeah, mm-hmm. a secret card. And they all have their own rating in terms of score and then their own, mm-hmm. own roles of what they do. So you go around and you, uh, as you draw a card, you're always having to draw another card. And depending on what that card says, mm-hmm. you're able to, um, I guess your goal is to try to find out who the princess is or at least get that princess card or the highest card, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Basically, thematically, you're trying to get your love letter to the princess and each you are definitely exactly right. So on your turn, you're going to have a card in your hand and then on your turn, you'll draw a card and then you have to play a card. So you're always left with one card in your hand and you're always playing one card on your turn. Mm-hmm. And the game ends when um, either uh, the whole deck is all the way depleted or if... Um, uh, excuse me, that's the round. The round ends if the uh, deck is all the way depleted or if the uh, there's only one player left. And then the first person to get three favor is the winner at the end of the game. Yeah. And being someone who doesn't play a lot of these kind of games, this mm-hmm. one was, I feel like, super simple but also challenging enough. Mm-hmm. And uh, the, the thematic... I just like saying that word. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is thematic. Um, just that part of of like the the princess and the countess and the guard mm-hmm. you really get to like kind of get into character with that as well yeah and i feel like, like it some some of the times we were like talking with accents and just being really goobery and right and well, trying to make us dress up in costumes and yeah my dad a... had to wear a dress the whole time so. <laughs> and there's a playlist you can you can find with this right well so we just play around? we'll shout shall, i'll shout out that website there's a website i think it's called it's melodice m-e-l-o-d-i-c-e dot com i believe and it's a really cool website where you can type in the name of the board game you're playing, and then it'll generate a huge playlist of, of music that kind of fits thematically. So we had like classical music going when we were playing yeah, playing that one, yeah. and and so. But yeah. it is it is really fun. Like we played, I I would play this and take this anywhere with me. Yeah. As someone who is a noob to. Well, and you can do games. it. You could take that. Yeah. Camping yeah. or. It's so accessible. I mean. Wherever. <laughs> turns into an infomercial. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's a great pick i think it's a really good game definitely a this was i got this on my um from you guys actually for christmas mm-hmm. and um had my eye on it i had played it once before and yeah i agree i think it's super accessible super easy to understand especially for new players and it's short i like mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. you can play a game in like 30 minutes so yeah. all right so we can go on to our number two favorite game mm-hmm. so dad you're up okay my number two on this was uh the wavelength um, fun to play. Um, mm-hmm. Like you said, I think one of y'all said it. If you don't, if you haven't played it a lot, then it's a little more challenging. Um, to me, it's the angst of playing it, with, especially if you're playing with somebody who's played it before mm-hmm. and is good at it. You kind of stumble around a little bit trying to figure out how to get this knob right <laughs> here in the right place. Right. Yeah. But I also feel like the cool thing about this game is it's not a lot of... Strat- I mean, there's strategy, no. but it's like it's going to be different every time you play it, who you play it with. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like kinda... Hillary. I'm not a big game player, you know, all the time like you and your friends. Right. Right. But I feel like you did a good job. I feel like it's the fun part is the critical thinking. Like, it's not too challenging to get how it, it flows, but it, it mm-hmm. is like you have to really think critically which is it's just exercising your muscles so you're like whoa i'm a little afterwards i was like okay i didn't really think about that because jordan Mm -hmm. made us play this game and then we played this one right here (laughs) kanban (laughs) ev right (laughs) just the hardest game ever yeah so that so wavelength was my second pick nice well my my second pick is actually not here um but this is chameleon so in chameleon this is also a social deduction game where you are trying to guess or actually you're trying to give clues on a secret word that is in the center of the board and all of the other players who are not the chameleon have a little grid which tells you which what is the secret word but the chameleon doesn't know so after everyone's done they go around the table and they give a hint on that secret word 
but the chameleon has no idea what it is, so he has to try to blend in based on the words that the teammates are giving, or the opponents actually are giving, and then try to not be discovered at the end of the game. And yeah. I thought that was really fun. It always sucks when you go first, though, because you don't know the secret word, so you literally have to just guess. I think the one time it happened to me, the secret word was Romans, and I had no idea what it was because I was first, and I said South America, right. which was so bad. And like everyone immediately knew, but I somehow convinced everyone to blame my mom, and it worked, yeah. and my mom got voted out, and I won. Yeah. So oh, it was the one where somebody said bright. That yeah, was... somebody, she'll probably know this by watching this video. Oops, I think the secret <laughs> the secret word was basement. basement yeah. And she, I think she went first too that yeah, game. She did. And so when you're first, like I said, you have no idea. So you kind of just have to guess depending on where you think people people are looking at the, at the little secret word. And anyway, she said bright for basement and we immediately all knew. Right. Mm -hmm. She was out that she without was... anybody else taking a... And, yeah. and with KK, our other sister who cannot lie. <laughs> Literally. She, yeah, right away just was like, I can't do it, I can't do it. So it, it is fun because you're, it's really luck of the draw and mm -hmm. and so there's not much, well, I guess there's strategy in the sense of it's interesting to see who picks what because you, if you're not the chameleon, you also mm -hmm. want to try and, to not help the chameleon so you're trying to pick words that are less obvious mm -hmm. so you do have to think a, a little bit about it and hope that yeah. kind of your the the other people too are gonna mm -hmm. also play that that way as well but well, it our just... nephew hayden Oops. was really good at faking us out right mm -hmm. he somehow would look at that board and figure out a clue that sounded mm -hmm. feasible yeah it is that was that was actually my top two okay yeah okay yeah, well, yeah. it's yeah. so much fun i think I and mean, we have a big group of people and especially people at all different levels mm -hmm. of game playing i feel like mm -hmm. it's a a great like overall game just for everybody yeah cool number one yeah so number one so number one is um for me was this one why because look at it <laughs> so uh, what is that this is called just one you've got a magic marker some cards and a little placard that you write mm -hmm. your hints on and it's just, <laughs> excuse me, <laughs> let me get these out of here. Like, I'm sorry, you what? Can see, I, <laughs> I am not a gamer and it's going to show up. But you have these, but you have these <laughs> clues and the, and the person that's, whose turn it is picks a number without looking at this. Mm -hmm. And then you have to come up with clues for it, for that person whose turn it is. And you write it down there and they try to guess. It's easy. You don't have to know anything really to play, right. play this game, which is why I like it. Nice. So. Yeah, and the cool part about this game too is the whole name is just one. So how it works is when everyone writes their hints uh, of the secret word, before the, uh, the person who picked the word uh, looks around at the clues, all the clue givers have to compare their hints, and if there are any duplicates, you have to erase them. So it makes mm -hmm. it a like a more challenging, basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you could have one. Per everybody gets the same word, and there's one person. That's the only clue the the person gets. Right. Well, and you can really. I, I love this. Is actually my number one as oh, well. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. But it's cool because you can really get into the, like a, a a play on words where you mm -hmm. can like. Um... <laughs> <laughs> What? No, one thing I love about Just One is is just the play on words. So you can get into some really cool strategy where... Give us an example. Um, well, for instance, like if let's say the word is um, mountain, you can, um, you can write words that would be like, you know, synonyms to mountain. Or you could mm -hmm. be like mountain top. So you would write top on there. So you mm -hmm. can just, you can use it as like if it's in a phrase or whatever. So you can really... Depending on who is is it, almost if yeah. you know them too, you can mm -hmm. kind of try to think like how they think and what they yeah. would, what they might what reference they might understand. Right, and you can use the other clues in the in the group to give that person a clue. Yeah, right. But you're also kind of you're you're kind of betting that someone else is going to write a specific yeah. hint. Right. Which is, yeah, that's exactly true. And you're also yeah. hoping that they don't write the same one. Mm -hmm. So yeah. then sometimes people will pick everything like that's not obvious because they don't want it to be a repeat and then we end up it ends up being like really hard yeah like, like way too obscure right yeah oh it's it's fun like when when you actually have to reveal what y'all's words are yeah and then everyone else everyone knows what the word is but mm -hmm. to see the person try to make the connection and, and mm -hmm. connect those dots it's really entertaining because yeah. you think it's like so obvious and it's like 
it can be like such random words, but you, mm-hmm. since you know it, you're like, come on, it's right there. But they, you know, if you're on the outside, you're like, you could be like, uh, I have no idea. Yeah. But that happened a few times where it's mm-hmm. like right there, like the word is so obvious. So that's mm-hmm. just fun and entertaining for yeah. someone who, again, doesn't know a lot about like real detailed games. Well, yeah. and Chameleon's kind of like that, a little bit different format, but you're, mm-hmm. you're, you're yeah. jockeying for trying to, figure out what the other person is yeah. right. talking about. So those yeah. are really mm-hmm. fun games. Yeah. And just, again, I think back to, you know, we had ages, what, eight, 19 to 68? 69, yeah. Yes. No, 68. 68. Oh, okay, here. sorry. <laughs> I thought it was 69. <laughs> Anyways, just to have, like, the multi-generational mm-hmm. um, fun. Which makes, which makes these games interesting because if you've got Jen... Alpha on one end and a boomer mm-hmm. on the other end, same clue could mean totally different. True. Things. Yeah. That, True. Which that I think happened, happened a, a few times. times. I think yeah. so. Yeah. With yeah. with like Hayden and and, and me. So, yeah. 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 What about you? What's your number one? My number one is actually something we already talked about, and that's going to be Secret Hitler. So this is, like we already talked about, this is a social deduction game. Uh, I had bought Avalon, which got really good uh, reviews and recommendations, and tried it out first. And it's honestly like the same game as Secret Hitler, except it's in a fantasy theme. And instead of passing legislation or policies, you're going on quests. Um, I definitely preferred, uh, preferred, excuse me, Secret Hitler though. Um, I don't know. It just makes more sense in my head to be passing legislation and policies uh, as opposed to just going on a quest. And I'm usually a big fan of the fantasy theme, but um, on top of that, I already have Love Letter. And so that theme kind of overlaps, but I really liked the, um, just kind of the, the luck base on this. So whenever um, the president and chancellor are, are working to pass legislation, they're going to draw, well, the president will draw three policies which are these little cards that are either going to say fascist or liberal liberal. Mm -hmm. and they're going to discard one of those and then pass it to the chancellor who's then going to discard the final one and then enact or put into uh put into place a policy and it's either going to be liberal or fascist and so you i just really like the element of like interrogation and Mm -hmm. you really have to lie your ass off to like try to uh try to win whether you're the fascists or the, or the liberals and the thing about yeah. that game that i noticed is my your mother was one of the best liars of anybody that was playing the game which i've been married to her for 42 <laughs> yeah. years and i didn't yeah. know she was that good at it right right but, yeah, yeah it's really it's it's just fun i think matt was good at it too. the mm-hmm. drama that it creates because like you said when you have to you're by chance looking at the the different cards and so mm-hmm. you might like one of the times i was a liberal but mm-hmm. the president handed me as a chancellor to fascists and so i don't have a choice i have to play the fascist mm-hmm. and then I'm having to defend myself and know, be like, no, I swear I'm a liberal. I'm on yeah. your side. So right. it creates this like just running dialogue of drama and like, mm-hmm. like you said, like interrogation of, yeah. of who's who. So it's really fun to just banter and mm-hmm. kind of yeah. all, you know, pick on each other with that sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. I really like how this has the presidential powers too, which mm-hmm. I don't think Avalon had. So like on certain rounds when they're actually, when there's so many fascist laws that are passed, the, the acting president will get a specific bonus or a power. So one that I had, for example, was I was able to look at another person's party affiliation. So I basically could figure out if they were liberal or fascist. And I looked at their card and they were fascist. And I, it was basically the entire game of me trying to convince everyone else that they were fascist. Cause I could easily be, I could have been lying, you know, if I was mm-hmm. um, a fascist and mm-hmm. they could have been liberal. So it's that whole mind game that you're trying to play mm-hmm. yeah, with everybody. Another part of that was as if you were a, if you were a liberal president or chancellor and and a fascist move got you to the place where you can assassinate somebody, yeah. the, the liberal president, I believe it was the president can mm-hmm. assassinate someone. Right, well it's really any president. It's whoever yeah, is right. the president, so it could be a liberal, it could be a fascist and that happened to me in one of the games. I people were the fascists were figuring out that I knew what was going on. I knew who was who, and I was a liberal in that game. So they immediately, as soon as they could, they assassinated me. So I was out of the game, mm-hmm. and I had no say. I couldn't mm-hmm. vote or anything. And so, yeah. It's fun. Yeah. yeah, I really did enjoy that. And com- compared to Avalon as well, I just, it seemed like Avalon was more confusing to me. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Like, they're just, and, and like with the, the quests, like, you don't, no, you don't know mm-hmm. the quest. That's not really the point, but it, it mm-hmm. just was more confusing. And yeah. this one just right. was simple to the point 
And yeah, it, for someone who's a beginner, I like mm-hmm. that a lot. Yeah, the quest, at least from our when we played, it was kind of an afterthought. It wasn't even kind of relevant. It didn't seem. Yeah, yeah. I just I feel like I think that comes back to the theme, just making more sense, sort of. Yeah. Like it just yeah. makes sense for it to be like a gov- because on the equivalent of this, where you're passing policies, you're just going on a quest in Avalon, and so you can choose to pass or fail the quest. It just yeah. didn't seem as well. A, it didn't have any luck element, so you could literally just choose if you you pass or fail. Whereas this one, there's mm-hmm. that element of going through the de- the policies themselves, yeah. Yeah. And, and they're the all random. Weren't spelled out, were they? They just said no. go on a quest, but it didn't. Your imagination one, and your imagination was mm-hmm. not engaged as much as in that one. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. And that wraps up our top three favorite party games of all time. If you guys like this, give me a like and a subscribe. And if you hated this, feel free to roast me in the comments below. This is Jordan, Hillary, and Jay here at Totally Bored. We'll see you next time. If you roast him, I'll kick your Same. <laughs> Only I can do the roasting, okay? Yeah. Find something Just, better to do. Yeah. <laughs> Dwayne. No. That's one of my like most loyal subscribers. <laughs>